Today I'll be discussing Roberto Panunzi, who was referred to as the Pablo Escobar of the Mafia. However, after much research, many believe the label is incorrect. Panunzi was known as the Mafia's leading broker in the drug trade and represented their financial power. More importantly, Panunzi was someone who was able to bring enemies together in business and move freely between the Andragada and the Sicilian Mafia, as well as South American drug cartels. He was viewed and trusted with the utmost respect. And it's been said, Panunzi answered to no one, but worked for everyone. So join me for a deep dive into Roberto Panunzi. He was born in Rome, but immigrated to Toronto, Canada as a young boy. While growing up in Canada, he had the opportunity to reconnect with his Calabrian roots, as his mother was from Calabria and related to the Macri clan from Siderno. The clan's boss, Antonio Macri, had also settled in Canada. So as a young man in Toronto, Panunzi became a protege of Macri. During the 1970s, the Andragada organization was making changes, such as implementing the Santa, a secret society within the organization, a higher level, one which Macri was opposed to. That opposition cost him his life. On January 20th, 1975, while back in Soderno, Macri was shot to death by machine guns. It was through Macri that Panunzi made his contacts in ports around the world, which he would use to become a power broker for the Mafia. Another person Panunzi became very close to while in Toronto was Salvatore Maselli, a Sicilian who was also living in Canada. Panunzi and Maselli were around the same age, with Maselli being two years younger. In time, Maselli became a member of the Sicilian Mafia. His grandfather was Salvatore Zizo, a boss from Trapani who was heavily into narcotics, a trade that would be passed down to his grandson. Bernardo Provenzano was said to have trusted Maselli to such a degree that he entrusted him with handling the Mafia's drug business. He also was a key point man for Matteo Messina De Nero. Maselli would become known as the Mafia's foreign minister and was the middleman, along with Panunzi, who merged good relations between the Sicilian Mafia and the Andragada. Together, they transformed global drug trafficking. Maselli would be arrested in the early 90s for trafficking drugs, and while free on bail, he became a fugitive, up until his capture in Caracas, Venezuela, in June of 2009. During his early years, Panunzi would return to Italy and hold several legitimate jobs, like managing the Grand Hotel in San Pellegrino and working at Alitalia, the Italian airline. He also owned an open and upscale clothing store in Rome named Il Papaviro, which translates to the poppy, ironically named for the poppy plant where heroin comes from. Despite having legit jobs, Panunzi became heavily involved in the drug business at an early age. By the 70s and 80s, he was trafficking heroin with Gaetano Pedalamente and was the person who suggested setting up refineries in Sicily. He even convinced André Boucher, a chemist from Marseille, to help out. In addition, he dealt with both Stefano Botante and Salvatore Anzarillo in smuggling heroin into the United States, most likely going to the Cherry Hill Gambinos. Panunzi also married Adriana Diano, whose father belonged to the Macri clan in Siderno. The marriage didn't last, but the blood ties did. Initially, Panunzi dealt in heroin, but had the foresight to see that cocaine was the new preferred drug, so he laid the groundwork to managing and moving it. He would link up with Pasquale Morando, a boss from Plati, and a major trafficker. In later years, Morando created the tunnels and bunkers in Calabria made to evade law enforcement. Panunzi and Morando's first joint venture ended in failure. After an old ship named the Mirage II, which Panunzi purchased, sank with their load and causing them to lose billions in Lira. Nonetheless, their future shipments were successful. Panunzi was shipping two to three tons of cocaine a month into Europe. To facilitate this, he bribed custom officers, ship owners, and airline pilots, and even purchased a number of planes and ships and always paying for them in cash. Speaking of cash, Panunzi amassed so much money, he once threw away millions in lire because the money became too moldy. He would eventually move to Colombia, where the Colombians nicknamed him the Lord for his fancy attire. It was in South America that Panunzi built strong relations with the cartels. In fact, his son Alessandro married the daughter of a notorious member of the Medellin cartel. That union further cemented his ties in Colombia. In 2007, 
Alessandro would be arrested for his involvement in trafficking cocaine from Colombia. Anunzi was held in such high regard by the cartels that he was able to mediate the release of a member of the Sicilian Mafia who the cartel was holding hostage and threatening to kill. This was the result of being owed a final payment on a drug deal. At first, Miscelli tried to intervene, but to no avail. And it was Panunzi who went and collected the old money. But the hostage was released prior to that, just on his word. His first arrest was alongside Miscelli in March of 1983, most likely for drugs. But from 1983 to 1994, he had a very successful run. As for his freedom, he had this to say, If I have to die, I want to do it as a free man. As the history of his arrest unfold, you'll see how serious he was about that statement. Panunzi's nemesis was none other than Italy's anti-mafia prosecutor, Nicola Grattieri, who was the prosecutor in the recent Andragata Maxi trial. Panunzi was arrested on January 28, 1994 in Medellin, Colombia, while attending the funeral of a local boss. According to Grattieri, when Panunzi was in custody back in Italy, he pretended that he had a heart disease and was sent to a private clinic, the Villa Sandra, in Rome, where he escaped and became a fugitive, but was arrested again months later on April 5, 1994, in Madrid, Spain. Arrested with him was his son Alessandro and son-in-law Francesco Bumbaca. The three men were on their way to dinner with the Countess of Madrid when they were taken into custody. Grattieri explained that Panunzi had a 22-year-old girlfriend, and prior to his capture, they had wiretapped the couple's bedroom. So after the arrest, those tapes would come in handy. Panunzi showed the judge documentation of his heart condition. So Grattieri put all the tapes on a CD for the judge and told him, listen to the tapes and tell me if he's in danger of losing his life. Nevertheless, even with the tapes, Panunzi was released from prison, most likely on bail, and within a year and a half, fled Italy again. Grattieri once told Panunzi, after capturing him, don't you regret it? Now you're 61, 62 years old, and you will die in prison. But adamantly, Panunzi told him, no, I'm getting out. Grattieri also questioned how he was able to remain a fugitive while in Colombia. Panunzi told him, I always travel with a briefcase full of money. When someone stops me, I give them the briefcase. If the briefcase isn't enough, I have a lifesaver, a diamond, and I give him the diamond and walk away. Panunzi asked Grattieri, whom he referred to as the doctor, let me out, doctor. I'll have 300 kilos of cocaine confiscated a month. But Grattieri told him, no, then you and I have to talk. Which Panunzi answered, I have so much money, I'll fill this room. Let me quickly mention the Super Thanks icon, which can be found underneath this video by clicking on the three dot drop down, put there for anyone who'd like to show appreciation for videos like this, and thank you. In April 2010, using his heart disease as an excuse, Panunzi was able to escape once more. This time, Grattieri used all his South American contacts to hunt for Panunzi. At the time, he was living in Venezuela, but traveled to Colombia to do business. Under Grattieri's direction, law enforcement set up a sting, and on July 6, 2013, Panunzi was arrested in a shopping mall in Bogota, Colombia. Again, he offered 5 million euros if they let him go. Obviously, they declined his offer and extradited him back to Italy. When he landed in Rome and saw Grattieri, he said, Oh, doctore, come stai? Hey, doctor, how are you? Panunzi was placed in the Draconian 41 Biz Unit, where he again complained of heart trouble. And when he was scheduled to get a scan at an outside hospital, he was escorted by 50 guards. I'll end with Nicola Grattieri had to say about Panunzi, specifically his wealth. Panunzi never counted his money because those who count it don't have enough and want more. Panunzi always weighed his money.